Hey, this is part two of my uh, graphic-a-thon reading vlog. You can probably watch two without having watched part one, but I actually talk about more graphic novels in part one. In this part, I do talk about some children's books, so picture books, um, which is tangential to graphic novels. Um, I also talk about some current events um, and a few other things. So, here is what I did for the second part of the first week of November. It is 2.30 um, the next day, and I did not read any last night. What did I do last night? I'm sure I did things last night. Probably just watching YouTube videos. This morning, I... Looked up stuff about Fulton versus the city of Philadelphia, um, which is a Supreme Court ruling that is starting, uh, that's going to start all of its stuff tomorrow. Um, I haven't really heard anybody talk about it. The only reason I know about it is because of a random Instagram post that was talking about the Supreme Court. So, but I made a Facebook post about it because uh, it's about adoption and whether or not private organizations that get government money are allowed to discriminate. Um, and it's in regards to adoption as well as homelessness, uh, or not homelessness, but resources for uh, people who are homeless, like shelters, um, and then other things as well. But it's relevant to the state that I am in because in January, they made it to where it was legal for adoption agencies to discriminate like that. Um, and it's not, it, it's relevant to LGBT people because that's, um, who one of the groups that will end up, uh, getting turned away by religious organizations, but it's also relevant to religious freedoms, um, and different things like that because they could also turn adoptive parents away due to their religion. So, I've been looking up stuff about that and having a fun time trying to navigate government websites that aren't updated. But after that, I participated in the reading hour that Audrey and R host, and there I read more of Love Beyond Space and Time. I got through a few. One of them focused kind of on, like, queer ancestors. Um, I mean, there there was a lot more to it than just that, and there's a lot more that you can extrapolate. But, like, the main theme that I got from that is kind of looking at... Um, kind of your, like, queer elders, but it's specifically looking at two-spirit people. Um, so that was really interesting. And then another one was looking at, uh, virtual reality, and that one was really neat. Uh, this story I would have wanted to see, like, put into a book, especially because it seemed very open-ended. There are multiple ways to interpret it. Um, and then I read another short story that, is very short, and I don't really know how to summarize it super well. A lot of it has to do with, like, not just tolerance, but, like, embracing people who are different, kind of. Um, and then I started another story that, um, I don't really know very much of what it's about yet, because I've only read a page of. Um, so, that is what I read for that reading hour. I kind of want to finish up the short story that I'm on, but I should also start on some graphic novels. I don't know what I'll end up doing today. Um, it's November 3rd, in case it wasn't super clear, so shit is happening. Um, people are voting, and I'm stressed out about it. I've actually been just kind of aimlessly scrolling. I haven't felt the anxiety on, like, a cognitive level. It's mostly, like, dissociating and only being able to scroll aimlessly and not do anything else. So, hopefully, I'm done doing that. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might, I've got the, like, one friend that I regularly see in person, um, I saw I might go to his house so that we can maybe look at election results when that comes up, or maybe just watch TV shows. When I went to help him move furniture, we started watching, um, Central Park, 
which is something that's only on Apple TV, which I absolutely do not have, and he just got a free trial of just to watch that show, and I'm really loving it, so maybe I can talk him into rewatching some more episodes so that I can see more of it. It's, like, perfect for me in terms of, like, humor. I don't like a lot of, like, the funny TV shows, especially the animated ones that are, like, adult cartoons. Most of them are, like, exhausting and incredibly unfunny. Um, but I do like some, like, I like Bob's Burgers, and this, uh, is the same art style as Bob's Burgers, so I don't know how many of the creators are kind of in the same thing. I know that, uh, I've heard at least one character that was voiced by the same person who voiced Bob, so some people are clearly involved in it. Um, and it's, but the whole thing is, like, a cartoon, but it's a musical. The whole show is a musical. Leslie Odom Jr. is in it, and it's great. So, I hope I can watch Central Park instead of the results of the United States election. Alright, it is 10 at night. I have not gotten a lot done. I did go to the store to get a battery to fix the uh, fire alarm problem, so there won't be that annoying beeping every, like, five minutes. So that's an improvement. And I did a couple of things around the house. I've also done a lot of scrolling. And I also talked to a friend, but the important thing, the thing that y'all are interested in, because this is a reading vlog, I caught up on Heartstopper, and, I mean, it's Heartstopper. It's, it's not going to disappoint. I think the last time I read an update was in August, maybe? Um, I don't know, there's just a lot of really great stuff. I definitely cried twice. Almost cried another time, but because of happy stuff rather than sad stuff. Um, the way that they're handling a lot of the mental health stuff that's coming up in this uh, part five is just really great. And there are a lot of really wonderful uh, lessons that can be taken out of it. Um, and then on top of that, there's just a lot of cute stuff with... Charlie and Nick, of course, but also with some of the side characters. It's just super wholesome. So it's like a really good mix of like hard hitting and like sickeningly sweet. That it just hits. It's just right. Um, so yeah, I really want more. Uh, I mean, I read like a fair amount, um, but I just want an endless scroll of Nick and Charlie, which is uh, not feasible. So. That's what I've done. I'm not super sure what I'm going to do. I should probably look up some election stuff and intentionally look at a little bit of that. Maybe. Maybe I'll just read something else instead. I really considered starting one of my nonfiction books, even though, like, I kind of want to finish The Undocumented Immigrants before I start something else. But I had a conversation with one of my friends, and they brought up The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, which... I wanted to read for Fortnite Frights last month, but I didn't get around to it, so I considered reading that. I also considered reading uh, Theology of Liberation, which I was supposed to read for Latinx Heritage Month, and I didn't get around to it. But then that trail of thinking led me to think of The Color of Compromise, which is actually on my nonfiction November TBR. So there's a chance I'll start that. There's also a chance I'll start, like, literally anything else, because I don't think that my thought process in picking books is ever super linear. Um, but I'll check back in when something happens. When something happens. It is 9pm on Wednesday the 4th. I don't think I checked in this morning. I didn't do a whole lot of reading earlier than I went to work. Um, and I actually ended up reading some at work because it was pretty dead. I guess people didn't want to go book shopping while, uh, the future of American politics is up in the air. Um, which is understandable. I, too, did not want to do anything, but instead I had to make money so that I can live. But while I was there, I ended up reading some kids' books. Um, we have, like, a, a book drive going on, so I had books up front that I ended up reading and got in conversations with some co-workers who really like kids' books. And then I also put together a fixture for 
Native American Heritage Month and had some kids' books on there, so I ended up reading a couple of them. I read eight books on my shift, which sounds like a lot, but again, they're like little kids' picture books, so it's pretty fast to get through. So I guess I'll start with the ones that I read off of the Native American History Month fixture. I think that both of these kind of stood out from some of the kids' books that I've read in that the, you know, the beginning, the bulk of it is the story, but at the end, they actually contextualized all of it. The one that did this the most was called Fry Bread. And uh, so the whole story is basically about their family making fry bread and the different ways that it can be made and the different ways that it can be used and different things like that. And the end of the book actually goes section by section and talked talks about what exactly that means because the actual like story piece of it it's you know a few lines um like a pretty short standard slightly poetic kids book but they go in and talk about a lot of like tough issues they talk about um in in the second part they talk about food insecurity um for instance as a big issue and then they also talk about you know the fact that indigenous people in the Americas are really diverse. So there was just a lot of really great stuff to come out of that. It also includes a recipe, which is pretty cool. Then I read Water Protectors. The bulk of the book talks about the different ways in which water is important and the ways that people are connected to water, and then discusses this folklore or the story that this big black snake was going to come through the water and kind of destroy things. And then from there, talked about uh, the, the water protectors like the for the Dakota pipeline. So again, this was like a kid's book. There was artwork that was really wonderful. I really enjoyed the artwork in this one. Um, and it tells the story in a way that's appropriate for children. Um, and then at the end, there is a whole page. It wasn't as um, in detail as Fry Bread, which there was a ton with that. But in this one, um, they do talk a little bit about the Dakota Access Pipeline. But they also talk about, like, sort of the crossroads that the world is at and kind of the importance of connecting back to nature. So I thought that was really cool. Um, overall, what I found sitting in reading these, which didn't even really take this long, I probably read all of these within the last, like, two or three hours that I was at work um, while I was also, you know, working and checking some people out. But I don't really read kids' books that much just because I don't, like have kids so sometimes I'll read them especially because like I have a little sister but like I don't go and seek out children's books but I think that that's kind of an area that a lot of people should be looking into more because all of the books that I read today were really wonderful and most of them touched a spot that I wasn't expecting they were very impactful like about half of these I um, kind of teared up reading, which maybe isn't saying much because I cry at like literally everything, but um, they were really powerful. Uh, with this, I read um, several of Matt De La Pena's books, and these were, I think, the primary tearjerkers. Love certainly was. And it, this just talks about like the nature of love, basically, which seems like, you know, oh, it's nice, it's hugs, it's whatever. It seems like a standard, like, little kid's book thing. But it also talks about some of the tough parts of it as well, um, in a way that I think is appropriate and important for a kid that age. Because if you, you know, talk about how great love is, and you see it from your dog, and you see it from your dad and your mom and whatever, what are they going to think when life happens? Um... And everything doesn't always feel, you know, happy and lovey. So the fact that, you know, love still exists, even if it feels like it's not there, that sort of lesson is very important, I think. Uh, the other Matt De La Pena book that I read was Last Stop at Market Street, um, which was the second book that I read uh, in general today. And I was super impressed by it because the first one that I read, which 
maybe I should have talked about first. But, like, it was good, but it wasn't, uh, like, elevated like some of these other books were. And The Last Stop on Orchid Street um, had some interesting artwork. And basically the whole thing was this kid gets on the bus with his grandma and, like, sees all the people on the bus. Uh, but he's also asking these questions, like, towards the beginning, he's like, oh, well, you know, my friend is leaving in his dad's car. Why don't we have a car? And the grandma's just like, oh, well, we wouldn't get to go and see all this cool stuff. And um, there are other details like that where... I guess it addresses differences in just some of the way that people live, especially some people who don't make the same amount of money. Um, and it, I don't know, it handles it very well. I thought it was a really excellent book. Um, and then the other Matt De La Pena book that I read was Carmela Full of Wishes. And again, you know, these are all little kids' books, so the premise is simple and sweet. Uh... Carmela is a little girl who keeps having these times where she could make wishes on things, on her birthday cake, on this dandelion, on all of these other things. Um, and she talks about not really knowing what to wish for, but there are also, like, little things that she hopes for down the line. And a big piece of the book, she's trying to decide what to wish for with this dandelion that she found. And at the end of it, she, you know, well... I think I'm allowed to discuss spoilers for kids' books. Um, at the end of it, she, like, trips and falls, and her dandelion goes everywhere. And she's, like, concerned about it, but her brother says, Oh, look, like, the wishes are everywhere. Um, and by the end of it, you don't know what her wish is. And the way that it's done, it's just really good and really impactful, especially with the details that you get of her life. Because, like, it talks about um just the details of like her brother having to go to work um and you also learn that her dad used to be here but got deported even though that's not like a central thing like the whole thing is about her wishes but like that's a background thing and something that she's dealing with so very impactful very effective and i don't even like i I think that there are definitely multiple ways that the book could be read. Um, but regardless, I don't know, it's just a really important book, a really great book. Now, the first book that I had read was A Chair for My Mother, which, um, that was a good book. It was cute. Um, like I mentioned, I don't think that it was necessarily... I don't want to say elevated, because it, it was a really good book. For whatever reason, it didn't elicit the same emotional response as some of the other ones, which, like, I clearly am, like, an emotional reader. But I try to also be able to analyze what I'm looking at, too. I don't know. Regardless, it was a uh, book that focused on this little kid that talked about being with her mother, um, kind of seeing her mother, like, go to work all the time. Basically, um, she started collecting coins in this jar. Her mother would contribute her tips, and then her grandmother would, too. And by the end of it, they buy a chair so that her mom can sit and rest her feet after work. So, again, it's really simple, but, I mean, it is the fact that it focuses on someone, um, I guess, in that situation where you like, don't have a bunch of nice furniture and you do have to save up. It kind of, like, normalizes, like, different ways that people can live. And, like, saving in order to help everyone out and something that everyone can use because they all end up sitting in the chair. Um, so, that was super cute. Another one that I read was Thank You, Owu, which is basically the story about this little old lady who makes some stew people start smelling it so they come to her door and they like ask oh can I have some can I have some and she gives everyone some and then at the end she doesn't have any left but then she, when she's left with an empty bowl everyone comes back and says hey like we wanted to thank you and they all have this like feast together so it's basically a nice book about like sharing and stuff like that um this one I felt a little bit sad about though just because um looking at the world in the way that it is today it seems like less people would be like that, and that's depressing. Um, there's also some stuff with, like, like, if you look at it with, like, 
a political lens, which, you know, everything is political, so you shouldn't not look at things with a political lens the majority of the time, I think. Um, but there was, like, one of the people who came up was, like, a police officer, a <laughs> white police officer coming into this woman of color's house being like, hey, can I have some soup? Is, like, not cute. Like, I understand, like, in the context of the whole story, like, everyone's coming to your house, so that's... But that being one of the ones that they decided to, like, point out as, like, the second person who comes to her house. It was a little... made me feel a little bit weird. There is also a book called Know How to Love, and that one was really sweet, too. Um, this one, I think, was probably on par with A Chair for My Mother, um... And that, you know, it was really good. And it made me, it did make me feel things. But it wasn't to the level that uh, Matt De La Pena's books were on. Um, or the uh, ones that I mentioned that I read with the um, uh, from the Indigenous end, end cap that we made. It was really good and really sweet. And it talked about basically, like, how to take care of your friends. And I do think that that's a really important lesson. So, uh, it was really sweet and the artwork was really cute. And then I read All Because You Matter, and this one, I think, got me, like, in the feels the most. And the whole story starts out talking about how, you know, like, everyone is made of matter, everything is made of matter, um, we're made out of stardust, and, like, that, that sort of thing. Um, and it's talking about how, like, all of these little pieces of this person's life matter. It, it starts out and there's a couple and the woman's pregnant and then like it's the baby's first steps and it goes on and on and in it it you know mentions like even when all of this stuff is going on and even if it doesn't seem like you matter you still matter and it specifically talks about um like I don't think that it says like police brutality in it but it talks about hearing all of these different people's names Trayvon and Michael and Tamir and even though it talks about this difficult stuff the whole point of it is that um is that you know the boy still matters regardless of um you know how the world is treating you there are still people who care about you and there are things that you can do and this is actually the only other one that did what uh similar to the couple of indigenous books that i read where they had the story and then they had um a slight, slightly intense note, so I think it was maybe slightly less than the other two books had, but it's still the author's note and the illustrator's note talked about why they wrote this and kind of the importance of it. Um, the author talked about, you know, having a son and being black and the sort of stress and fear that that comes with, but she didn't want him to live in fear while also, like, you know, needing him to protect himself or, like, be aware. Um, and then the illustrator talked about her choice of, um, her choice of illustration style, I guess, because there was a lot of incorporating of quilts. Um, that was also a, a beautiful book. So, I think I've talked about, no, there's one more that I read, um, Julian goes, uh, I wrote down Julian as a mermaid, but that's not the one that I read. I read, uh, I think it's called Julian at a Wedding, or Julian Goes to a Wedding. The picture of it will be there that you can see, but, um, this one was super cute. Uh, the artwork was super fun, and it's basically him going to a wedding, um, and there are just a lot of fun details. Like, it's just a fun story of him and his cousin, I think, going to a wedding, and then his cousin actually gets, like, super dirty. So, rather than, you know, going and telling their grandparents, they, uh, kind of remake her dress. So, Julian gives her his button-up, um, and they, like, cinch it and basically, like, make an outfit, and then they pretend to be, like, fairies. I really adored the, the, the artwork in this. This was really cool. And the whole thing, like, the wedding that they're going to has two brides. So, that's excellent. Um, so yeah, <laughs> those are all of the books that I read today. Do kids' books count for the Graphicathon? Because if that's the case, I hit past my goal today. Um, I still want to read stuff on my TBR, obviously, but, like, that's just funny. Um, 
I would definitely recommend all of these. The only one that I was iffy about was the one with the cop. But other than that, all of these um, are really, really wonderfully written and so important. Kids books is an art form that is not, um, not highly recognized. It's not recognized enough. So go check out your local bookstore or library and read some kids books. They're all right there. Um, and uh, diff stuff like Libby and Hoopla, they have kids, they have, uh, lots of kids books that you can take a look at. They're not all, you know, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Um, there's some stuff with some pretty intense things going on. That was my reading day. Not too sure what I'm going to end up doing tonight, but it'll be something. Don't know if it'll be reading, but it'll for sure be existing. So I'll check back in whenever that reading turns into existing. Wait, no. So I'll check back in whenever I have an interesting update. All right, this is editing back from December. So that tells you how long it took me to get the energy to edit this. I did not expect to uh, not have the mental capacity to edit for a good minute, but it is what it is. Part three should be coming out very soon. Um, there I'm going to be talking more about reading nonfiction, and then I also read another graphic novel and have a lot of, uh, election related angst. So there's that to look forward to. If you have watched this far, thank you so much for watching. This is way longer than I anticipated it being. Um, but yeah, you can look forward to part three fairly soon.